Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit here on a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited. So a diode wiring kit is just going to be one of the many things that we need in order to successfully flat tow our Jeep here. Now what this does is, this is going to transfer the signals from the motorhome to our Jeep so we can let other motorists out on the road know what signals we're going to be making, allowing us to arrive to our destination safe and sound. Now this is not only a safety requirement, it's also a legal requirement in nearly every state when you're flat towing a vehicle. So it does require that we splice into the factory taillight circuit, but it's only two wires on either side. And I really wouldn't put too much emphasis on this because there's actually diodes that are designed to prevent any issues from the motorhome from affecting the lights on our vehicle. So those diodes basically prevent the backflow of electricity. So you don't ever have to worry about your vehicle's taillights going out due to an issue on the motorhome. Everything is gonna be separated, so they're both gonna work when you need them to. So the great thing about these kits is that they are complete kits, meaning they come with everything you need to get the lights working. So in addition to the wiring and the diodes, which all install in our Jeep here, there's a couple other things that compose of this kit as well. Number one, perhaps probably the main thing is your umbilical cord. So you can see we have three different options for umbilical cords because this kit can come with either of these three umbilical cords. Now it's pretty easy to choose the right one. It's really not so much preference as it is what tow bar you have. So if you have a tow bar with integrated channels in there that your safety cables run to, and they also recommend running your wiring through there, you'd wanna make sure that you get an umbilical cord with the straight cable or the hybrid cable, which is a uh, partially coiled over here at the motorhome side and then straight so you can run it through the arms on your tow bar. So both of those options are good if your tow bar has those integrated channels. If your tow bar does not have the integrated channels like this one here, you're going to want to go with a coiled, a completely coiled umbilical cord because that way your wires aren't dragging the ground because you need, an ex you need enough slack to be able to make turns, but you don't want too much to where it's dragging the ground. So that coiled design is going to keep it nice and tight with the tow bar there so you're not damaging your wiring. So in addition to the umbilical, we're also going to get our trailer connector. So what's great about this kit is it doesn't utilize a standard four-way, it utilizes a seven to six-way. The vast majority of motorhomes on the market that are gonna be capable of flat towing a vehicle are gonna have that seven-way. So it's gonna be directly compatible with your motorhome. And then having the six-way on the vehicle side allows you to route additional circuits through this umbilical cord, such as a battery charge line, should you have the need to add one. So to start your installation for your wiring, you're probably going to want to remove the skid shield on the Jeep. You may have a metal one or you may have a plastic one. The plastic one is held in place with some push fasteners here on the bottom edge of the bumper and then there's two screws in the corner there. It's pretty easy to remove, but once we get that out, we're going to go ahead and take our wiring harness bundle and I'm actually just going to loop it around our base plates on our vehicle there. And this is what we'll do, uh, this is what we're going to connect to our trailer connector there. Once we get finished, that'll be the last step, but the first step is just routing this wire all the way from the front to the rear of our vehicle back where our taillights are. We're gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll show you the path that we took. So we've got our wire in now. We went up and over the metal skid shield and we actually used some of the uh, wire loom that comes in your kit here for this first foot or so. And we've got some zip ties here just to sort of secure it because we need to be careful. There's a lot of moving suspension components here. And then we went up and over the top of the frame. We sort of go around the uh, strut mount or the shop tower mount there above the frame because we want to avoid all this stuff. We have the steering column up there as well. So be very careful, just take some extra time. Secure your wires with the included zip ties there so it doesn't get tangled up. And it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but we're gonna go all the way over to the top of the frame. And then we actually have it tucked behind this heat shield here because we have a lot of exhaust piping here, which gets really hot. So we wanna make sure we protect that wire. So it's coming from the top of the frame here. And then I just have it tucked behind the heat shield with some zip ties, securing it behind there. And they're pretty much just gonna do this all the way back. And again, our wire is still tucked behind that heat shield. Coming all the way back till here where the heat shield ends. And you can see our wire. We're gonna go up and over the frame above this cross member. Keep following it, and we have some more zip ties securing it to the factory brake lines. Go up and over this other cross member here. Our wire is going to come out over here, and then we're going to go up and over the outside of the frame, and we're going to route it down here. We're going to go ahead and leave it here for now because we need to remove the vehicle's taillights before we feed the wire up there. So, in order to remove your taillight, we're going to be starting on the driver's side. 
You're going to want to go ahead and open up the tailgate and the back hatch here and then we're going to look directly inside above this little platform in here. So we're going to have a little cover panel there which we'll remove with a flathead screwdriver. Go ahead and just flip that off. And then we're going to have a plastic nut down there that we need to remove with a 10 millimeter socket. With our nut removed, we should just be able to pull the taillight housing away from the vehicle. Go ahead and unplug your electrical connector, pull out on that red locking tab, depress that clip, and then you should be able to separate the connectors. So now you're going to reach down from underneath and there's a pretty good open slot there you can just feed your wire through and now we're just going to pull it the rest of the way. So now that we have our wire inside the taillight pocket, I like to take a zip tie and just secure it somewhere in here to an existing wiring, that way it doesn't fall back down. But what we're going to do now is we're going to separate all the strains on our wiring harness, so just separate each of these colors. So now that we have our wires separated, the first one we're going to secure is the ground, which is this white wire. So we have plenty of extra here. I'm going to go ahead and cut a lot of that off. And then I'm going to strip back some of the jacket and crimp on the ring terminal that comes in your kit. And then we're going to secure it to a bare metal surface inside the taillight pocket here using the provided self-tapping screw. Now we need to start stripping back the fabric tape on our taillight connector because we need to access these wires because they're the ones we're going to be slicing into. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off that little security holder there and then I'm going to take a razor knife and I'm going to carefully cut this tape off making sure that we don't pierce the wires. Now if you get lucky enough and find one of the ends, you might be able to peel it off, but it's usually not that easy, which is why I'm just going to get out our razor knife now and just be super careful to peel that back without damaging our wires. So now that we have that fabric tape off, we've already went ahead and did the hard part and tested the wires for you. So we're over here on the driver's side and the wires that we're going to use are the yellow, which is going to be for our stop and turn, and then the white slash gray, which is for the tail light. So we're going to go ahead and cut these about midway. And once we do that, we're going to go ahead and strip some of the jacket off each of these wires. So we're going to start with the yellow wires here. You're going to take the blue spade terminals that come in your kit and you're going to splice one of those onto each of our yellow wires. Now once I have one on each of those, we're going to take the yellow wire coming from our wiring harness. We're going to go ahead and cut a lot of that extra off and we're going to splice on another blue spade terminal to this one. Now once we've done that, we can go ahead and take one of our diodes here Make sure the single output side goes towards the connector and just simply slide these spades over the terminals. So now we're going to do the same thing for our white and gray wire. So I'm going to take the brown wire and clip the excess off just like we did for the yellow one. But we're actually going to save this because this is going to be our jumper wire that's going to run over to the other side of the vehicle. So what you do is you just twist these two ends together just like that. And you'll notice one of your diodes in your kit is different. It has a ye yellow spade terminal and that's the one we're going to attach to these two wires that we just twisted together. But aside from that everything is going to be pretty much the same as the one we just showed you. So. Your two other blue spade terminals will go on each end of our white and gray wire. Now once we have all those connections made, make sure they're nice and tight here. And then we'll go ahead and plug in our diode. There 
There we go. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna take the backing off of both of those diodes there and just stick them to each other. Now the only thing we have to do is, we're gonna take the green wire that we have left and the other end of our brown wire, we're gonna route that back through the hole that we came up through earlier and over to the other side of the vehicle. So now that we have those wires routed back underneath the vehicle, we'll go ahead and re-secure our tail light. So your brown and green wires are gonna come down sort of in this area over here. You're gonna route them up and over the frame rail. And then I pretty much just zip tied them to the top of this cross beam section here all the way across over the frame rail here until you see our wires dangling down. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna do the same thing that we did earlier. We're gonna reach down through that tail light pocket there and pull our wires up through there. So we've got our two wires pulled up into the tail light pocket here over on the passenger side. Now there is a little hole down there that you'll sneak your wires through. It's pretty easy to reach from underneath, although it's kind of hard to see. But again, we're just gonna take a zip tie and secure our wiring up here. That way it doesn't ever fall back down. Go ahead and cut some of our excess wire off. And start stripping back the jacket. Now, our wires in the tail light connector here, we're gonna have two of them. The green one is gonna be for the stop and turn signal circuit, and then the white and orange one is gonna be for the tail light circuit. So same thing as we did on the other side, separate them out and cut them. Now from here on out, we're pretty much just repeating the same process we did over on the other side, but with different color wires. So now we're ready to install a trailer connector so we can test our wiring. Now we're just gonna temporarily be doing this because we still have our skid shield off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and separate these wires here as best you can. Peel some of the jacket off them and then we'll attach them to our trailer connector. So now's a good time to go ahead and hook up to your motorhome. That way you can run through all the signals, make sure they're working correctly. We'll start with our tail lights here, our left turn, our brakes, and then finally our right turn. So now we're ready to install our trailer connector here. Now, most of your base plate kits are gonna come with some sort of trailer connector mounting bracket integration. This particular base plate kit is a Dimco base plate kit, and this is a trailer connector mounting bracket it comes with. It just simply bolts to the base plate there, makes things nice and easy for you. So if you don't have one of these, you will need to find some sort of way to mount this trailer connector here. They do make brackets for that, but most of the times your base plate kits are gonna have a mounting bracket that probably work with this plug. So chances are you're gonna be in the clear there, but now we're just gonna go ahead and proceed mounting this to our trailer connector mounting bracket of choice. We've just got our wire running through here. Now we went ahead and reinstalled the skid shield here. Um, I recommend doing that as well before you install the trailer connector. You can see we've got some extra wire here. I'm gonna go ahead and split all the ends on these. And we got plenty of excess. I'm gonna come back here and just trim that off. I'm also gonna use some of the extra wire loom we have in our kit to just sort of hide this wire here so it looks a little bit nicer. But what I'm gonna do next is we're gonna take our rubber boot there and stick that over the wires. Just like so. And then we're gonna begin stripping the jacket off of each of these wires. So now that we have our wire stripped, we'll go ahead and attach them to the terminals on the back of the trailer connector. They are labeled. GD is for ground. That's gonna be our white wire. So you just loosen the screw, stick your wire in there, and then tighten it back down. We have LT, that's gonna be for our left turn. So that is our yellow wire. 
Now the reason I twist these wires is because I don't want those strands to fray and potentially cause these circuits to jump across the terminals there. But then RT is going to be right turn, that's going to be our green wire. And then finally we have our brown and I'm going to be looking for TM. This is for the tail lights. So now the step isn't required, but I do recommend it. We're gonna take some gasket maker or we're gonna cover up all those terminals. That way water doesn't get in there and corrode the circuits. This is just from my experience in doing this. And a lot of the times, if you don't feel these, they can come back with lighting issues because there's water that gets in there and corrodes everything. So I'm just gonna work that in between the wires and the sockets as best as I can. And then I'm just gonna cover all those up. So now we're gonna take our trailer connector here. We're just gonna secure it to the bracket, like so. It's a pretty tight fit. And on the back side there, we will use our boot there to cover everything up. And now we're just going to secure our trailer connector to the mounting bracket with our hardware. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster Diode Wiring Kit here on a 2022 Jeep Wrangler Unlimited.